First of all, a bowl of really cold water. It's best to work outside. And then add some washing up liquid. I find the best way is to sort of pour the washing up liquid underneath the water if possible and add lots and lots and lots so that it feels really soapy on your hands. So gently mix it up without forming any bubbles. This is why you add the soap to the water and not the water to the soap. So you can feel now that your hands are really sort of soapy slimy. Excellent. And now I'm beginning to squeeze the silicon out of the gun into the water. I try to put it in as close to the surface of the water as possible and let it go underneath. But it's sort of like lots and lots of trailing pieces of cooked spaghetti. And they stay in the water and you leave them for a few moments to sort of just mix in with that soapy water. You push in as much as you can. It can feel quite stiff actually. So I think this is where sometimes you just need to um, wear gloves when you're doing this, you know, maybe heavier gardening gloves or something. Anyhow, that's the first stage in. And then you put your hands in gently underneath the sort of spaghetti silicon strands and slowly bring them towards each other and rolling over gently, touching them lightly at first and then gradually more and more. And you can scoop up all the little strang straggly little bits into the into your palm of your hand and then just keep dipping your hand under the water and squeezing gently at first and then you start to feel the pile of silicon sort of thicken up a bit. Press it, squeeze it, roll it, press it, squeeze it and dip it into the water and keep it main thing to do is to keep it cold and wet. It doesn't take very long. And then there you are. It's beginning to come together. You can relax, you still have plenty of time, but you can't hang about really. That's why it's best to do it in cold weather, in cold water outside. This is the first pressing of the silicone onto some wildflowers. And then I'm moving on to a second mixing of the silicon, just again to sort of emphasise how easy it is, but how gentle you have to be at first, and then actually how firm you can be as you get it into the project. So mixing and rolling and squeezing and dipping, basically. Mixing and rolling and squeezing and dipping, and scooping up all those straggly little bits of silicon spaghetti, because there's no point leaving them in the bowl, and they just all adhere and mix in together. And really, you end up with a very impressive looking lump of silicon, actually. This one I'm going to use. I'm going to divide it into two pieces and I'm going to use it to press into rather than onto. I'm, I've got a project in mind here, which is why I'm doing this one. As you will see, I'm going to use the outside of an old oyster shell, which has got some barnacles on and also the bottom side, which is quite flat and beautiful, of a, a fir cone. So I'm dividing it into two and rolling it up. And then that's the, uh, what's that, the fir cone or the, it's the oyster shell. Pressing it in and gently easing up the sides of the silicon around the edge. The beauty about silicon is because it's so flexible, you can have lots of overlap and once you've got your cast in there, you can gently peel it away. And, and if you're careful, you can use these moulds again and again. So that's the, the oyster shell. And now for the next one, which is the fir cone. Because it's in the tray, I also, from time to time, will splash in some cold water so that the whole of the base of the tray has got a, a, a water at the bottom. It really helps the silicon to set hardish. It's never going to be actually hard. So dipping the end of the fir cone in and just pressing it gently into the silicon, but firm enough to make an impression. And that's it. 